So Japanese gaming site 4Gamer has managed to get a scoop from AMD's David Wang, Senior Vice President of Engineering for Radeon Technologies Group, about the company's plans to support DXR or DirectX Ray Tracing in games. Now, According to Wang, the company does not have plans to support DXR at the point in time until it becomes available across their entire product line, from the low end all the way to the high end. <laughs> The relevant excerpt from the interview was pretty insightful and makes sense from the perspective of the company. Developing DXR capable hardware takes a lot of R&D and is costly and there's no guarantee that the fad will catch on, so to speak. Unlike Nvidia, the company does not have the financial freedom to take such risks. Better to wait and see if Nvidia's RTX manages to create a market and then attempt to carve out its own niche. This was said from the interview. For the time being, AMD will definitely respond to the direct ray tracing. For the moment, we will focus on promoting the speed up of offline CG production environments centered on AMD's Radeon Pro render, which is offered free of charge. Utilization of ray tracing games will not proceed unless we can offer ray tracing in all product ranges from low to high end. This was David Wang, AMD, in an interview to 4Gamer. Now here's the thing. DXR is essentially an implementation that utilizes a certain hardware feature level. So far, up till 12.1 feature levels have been officially announced and most of AMD's GPUs are 12.0. Nvidia's Pascal is 12.1 and Turing is probably even higher as of yet undeclared feature level. Now there is some debate whether Turing's hypothetical 12.2 feature level is required to support DXR or it can run on 12.1 as well just fine. In any case, it doesn't look like running it on 12.1 without dedicated ray tracing cores will be feasible from a performance point of view and is doubtful if IHVs would allow that. What this essentially means is that trying to implement DXR on anything other than 12.2 or 13 level would result in significant performance cost. On the other hand, Navi is due in less than a year and that is a brand new IP. And depending on whether AMD managed to make that 12.1 or greater, the company could easily support DXR in the future, but with a big performance cost, unless they manage to squeeze in ray tracing cores, which is highly unlikely. That said, from what we've been told, the first Navi GPU to arrive will be a mainstream part and will have Vega 56-like performance, which is barely enough to sustain the heavy performance requirements of DXR. So AMD might actually make the strategic decision not to support it till heavy hitters like Navi 20 arrive much later, and even then they might not because of the performance impact associated with enabling DXR without dedicated ray tracing cores. The biggest implication that we can think of that future consoles like the PS5, which are always based on AMD tech, will probably not be supporting DXR either. In fact, your best bet for DXR in a Radeon card is what AMD has planned for following up to Navi, the architecture formerly known, codenamed Kuma, now dubbed simply as Next Gen, and will almost certainly be a feature level 12.2 or higher architecture. So there we have it. So far, AMD's is pretty much staying out of the real-time ray tracing in games, at least. They are still offering it through their Pro Render on that end of the spectrum. So that's part of the thing but that's not the same thing as in games. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think that's a good move on AMD's part to kind of hold off and see kind of how the market adopts it, if it's even worth it for them to implement such a feature into their graphics cards because it is obviously quite costly to do so. Love to hear your take on that one down in the comment section below. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure that you are subscribed and you hit that notification bell because we don't want to miss you in the next one.